It's time for your daily dose of all things Chicago sports. This is the Daily Score. Now, here's your host, Mark Grody. Game day. It's not game night yet. It's game day, though. Bears getting ready for Monday night football against the Minnesota Vikings. If you've been following this podcast or listening to me on 670 The Score, you might know, you may have figured out, that I have been feeling pretty good about the Bears' chances of winning, you know, relative to having seen the Vikings once and losing to them by six, despite one of those being a debagent fumble, which resulted in a 42-yard touchdown return in that game. You know, that has to be thought of. And the fact that the Bears just weren't ready to start the game against Minnesota where they give up the early sack. But I think that they will have learned from that game against Minnesota, A. And then, B, I do think there will be some carryover from the Detroit game. I think the Bears are pissed that they lost that game. I think that they should be. And I do believe that they will show something this week, and it'll be a win. However, now, I guess I don't feel as confident with a couple of the the injuries that we have just learned about, and that is number one, Tyreek Stevenson is out for this game, but downgraded to out. The Bears let us know, so he's out. That means that Terrell Smith is in the the rookie, presumably. I that'd be my guess that he'll be your starter. Um, he's been playing well. I like him. I'm anxious to see what he can do, but you know, not having Tyreek Stevenson in. That does hurt your defense, and obviously, you know, they beware. So, um, but yeah, Terrell Smith. Remember, he missed some games because he had mono. And I had a, a quick talk with him. I'm like, oh, so he had mono, huh? He's like, yeah. He's like, it's the worst. It's the most sick I've been since like fifth grade. Remember, like when you're in fifth grade and you like, you like, you're, you're sick, sick. Like you throw it up every hour. You know, your mom's bringing you crackers and soup and 7-Up and Sprite, whatever the anecdote was in, in your home. That's the way he kind of described it. Like, oh, man, like I'm throwing up like I'm you got the germs of a fourth grader. So uh, glad he's back. And, you know, he, he played very well in the preseason. We needed the, the refresher of the fifth rounder out of Minnesota. So and he has been playing a part for sure and has made some plays as well. Um, but let's get back into the other two guys that are going to be out. Tyreek Stevenson out. Deontay Foreman, the running back, downgraded to out. So no Foreman. I'm not worried. I feel like there's been a nice tag team effect going on with these running backs. You know, Khalil Herbert started off the season well, and then he goes down. Deontay Foreman takes the baton and played really well. Almost to the point where you're like, is he going to hurt the the run the run load of Herbert when Herbert returns? That did not happen, by the way. Herbert still got by far the most carries, but um, yeah, I expect that Herbert will pick him up, and Roshan Johnson will pick him up, and Travis Homer could could Darian Evans find his way back to the roster somehow. So we'll see. The running backs have been fine this year; they've been able to take care of each other. So I'm not too worried about that. And then the other one, too, there is a third spot that the, the Bears will be missing. And this one's kind of important is Larry Borum, because there, Larry Borum is your swing tackle, you know, in terms of depth and offensive linemen get hurt. So that that is not good to see that Larry Borum will be out. And you hope that uh, Braxton Jones and Darnell Wright will remain healthy and that Braxton Jones especially will be able to see the entire game. He will not have to come out of the game and tell everybody that he can't see so good. Um, We hope that that is not the case for him. So that's a quick update on the game and where the bears are. I do feel good about the bears winning this game at Minnesota. I want and I, and comfortably when I say that, I don't mean by like 20, I mean, comfortably, you know, comfortably seven to 10 points comfortably. So that's what I look at with the bears at Minnesota. One thing too, that I wanted to touch on some is the the recent a recent mailbag by Albert Breer um, from Sports Illustrated it's been getting some attention including from me I talked about this on the score and 
Um, he's not necessarily reporting anything. This is his informed opinion. So this is why I take it seriously because he's plugged in and knows the bears and obviously has a great national perspective from sports illustrated. But he, what he said was this, he said, I think it's trending toward Matt Eberflus not being back. And that in part is due to Kevin Warren's influence in the organization. He did not hire Ryan Poles. He did not hire Matt Eberflus. And I think he's motivated to see what he can do with his own guys in there. And that is, again, that's Albert Breer. And then the last sentence, I've also heard that Kevin Warren wants to be more involved on the football side. So that's the part that I'm jumping on because that that's the part that means everything in terms of, okay, we know that Kevin Warren was brought in here you know, first and foremost, maybe because of his experience in putting together and overseeing a stadium build as he did in Minnesota. But now you hear him start to let out maybe what his real plans are, and that is to be hands-on in the organization and on the football side. And here's the thing. I I like Ryan Poles. I do. I, I, I don't want Ryan Poles to get fired. I don't. I want him to, I want them to get, let him, let them um, see him through this, the time where he's got the, the big draft picks coming up next year. So I do hope that Poles continues to get opportunities with the Bears going in the future here and that he's not a two and done. I, I don't think that he has done anything egregiously wrong to to earn something like that. We know the bad was the trading of the, the number two pick for Chase Claypool. Nothing good about that. Bayless Jones looking like a, I don't know, third rounder. Is, I think bust is too strong of a word, but certainly a disappointment in Bayless Jones, the first offensive player that piqued his interest, and obviously he selected. Jalen Carter, could that become a mistake? Um, Roquan Smith and Tremaine Edmonds, that still to be seen. Right now, Roquan's just got the edge. Tremaine Edmonds got to get better if you want Ryan Poles to, to that be worthy of having let Roquan Smith go. Right now, it doesn't look good. The good, though, Montez Sweat. Darn all right, <laughs> might be the good. And that would offset Jalen Carter as well. Braxton Jones is good. The left, fifth round left tackle. Um, and he's not perfect, that's for sure. Um, DJ Moore, that's a good thing. Two draft, first round draft picks for next year. That's a really good thing. So I don't think that Ryan Poles has warranted enough to lose his gig. And again, they're not, nobody's reporting that he is. What I am saying is if that Kevin Warren wants more power over football. Is he keeping Ryan Poles? Is he usurping? Is he taking that power from him? If that was to be the case, um, you know, we're going to, it's possible, it's possible we could find out. But another thing in, in regards to all of that is like normally when you hear about a CEO and president wanting more power on the football side, you're like, oh, okay, who, what, why are we meddling? You know, it comes down to that or owners that meddle, meddle. you know, Jerry Jones is the, the classic quintessential example when it comes to that. But I think in the case of this, just because the Bears, it has been so long since the Bears have had sustained success, like it, literally the 80s, when they really had a chance to win most years, you know, starting in about 1984, <laughs> that that team was worthy of going to a Super Bowl for all of that, you know, for the next decade, basically. Um, that's the last time it, it has existed. So there is an organizational problem when it comes to that. And so I am for saying, all right, Kevin Warren, what do you have? Show us, show us your plan, put your plan in motion. I'm certainly willing to listen to that just because it's it hasn't existed here again since the 80s. So I could see Bears fans when they hear that, when they hear that Albert Breer has heard that Kevin Warren wants to be more involved on the football side. You're like, oh man, but but think about it. Think about it. Um, it, it. You just you want things done differently. I hope that doesn't involve letting Ryan Poles go. Um, that I really do. But 
uh, I am I am ready to just okay trust the guy trust the guy much like but different Theo Epstein back with the Cubs back in the day because okay tear it all down go for it put your money here yep let it stink go ahead give us a hundred losses and uh, you know just grit it's really it's grin and bear it sometimes because you're putting your trust into somebody now Theo obviously had already won. And one under similar circumstances, different city, similar circumstances, though, old team that hadn't won in a long time with some deficits when it comes to resources. So that's kind of a parallel that I'm kind of trying to make with Kevin Warren. This is a really when you relative to this position and what the Bears have not hired in the past, it was an absolute the hiring of Kevin Warren was an absolute blockbuster hiring. And now let's let's see what he does with it, what Kevin Warren does with it. I am anxious to see, and I know that a lot of this won't take place, you know, until after this season, but it's it's starting to feel like he will, in a good way, I think, impose his will on this organization. That's it for today. Enjoy Monday Night Football. You know we'll be talking about it on Tuesday on The Daily Score. Thank you for listening, as always, and subscribing. I really appreciate it. We'll talk to you tomorrow.